Welcome to a screencast on an introduction to electrochemical cells. The objectives of this screencast are for you to be able to describe the components of electrochemical cells, to explain in detail the operation of a galvanic cell, in other words, what is oxidized, what's reduced, what are the half-cell reactions, what's the direction of electron flow, what are the anode and cathode, what's the salt bridge, and what is the ion flow direction, to use standard reduction potentials to determine standard cell potentials, and to use cell notation to describe galvanic cells. Let's start by considering the reaction between copper 2 plus ions and zinc metal. And if we take a piece of zinc metal, a grayish uh, silvery colored solid, and place it in a solution containing copper 2 plus ions, which have a nice pretty blue color, uh, what we see over time is a reaction actually takes place. And over time, the blue color of the solution uh, fades as copper 2 plus ions react. A reddish orange, dare I say, coppery colored solid forms on the surface of the piece of zinc metal. And of course, that is the element copper, the solid. And we can't see these, but zinc 2 plus ions form in the solution uh, as well. These are clear and colorless, so, so we can't see them. But this reaction takes place. Zinc solid reacts with copper 2 plus ions to make zinc 2 plus ions and copper solid. And this, of course, is an oxidation reduction reaction. And if we look at it in some detail, uh, if we look at a standard reduction potentials chart and look where copper and zinc are on the chart, we see that copper is higher in reduction potential than zinc. And so when a reaction between these two species takes place, the copper being higher in reduction potential will undergo a reduction. So copper 2 plus will gain two electrons to make copper solid and the potential for that half reaction is plus 0.34 volts. And if copper is reduced, then the zinc, having a lower reduction potential, ends up being oxidized. And oxidation is, of course, loss of electrons, so the zinc solid will form zinc 2 plus and two electrons. That's the reverse of this reduction reaction, half reaction. And the potential for this half reaction is negative 0.76 volts as a reduction. Therefore, it's positive 0.76 volts as an oxidation. And then when we add the two half reactions together, we get the overall oxidation reduction reaction, Cu2 plus plus zinc solid makes copper solid plus Zn2 plus. And the overall potential for this reaction is 1.1 volts. Now, Note that the electron transfer here takes place at the surface of the piece of zinc. Uh, electrons are lost by the zinc, gained by the copper ions, forming copper atoms, which then adhere to the surface of the zinc. And so the electron transfer takes place very directly. Now, that is not as useful as if we do something else. We can, as it turns out, we can do this reaction in a much more useful manner, same reaction, but instead of putting the copper 2 plus solution directly in contact with the zinc metal, we take copper 2 plus solution and copper metal and put them in one, in this case, beaker. We took, take zinc 2 plus solution and zinc metal and put that in a separate beaker and then we connect the two pieces of metal, in this case via a voltmeter, but it could be via a wire with maybe a light bulb on it. And then we have a way to complete the circuit via a salt bridge. And what this does is allows the electron transfer to occur from one of these, what are called half cells, to the other. And electrons then will flow through an exterior wire, and that can be used to provide electrical energy or electrical power, much more useful. So let's look at the details of this. The reaction between copper 2 plus and zinc, the electrochemical uh, process, but set up in this particular way as an electrochemical cell. So what we have is the same reactions take place, copper, 2 plus undergoes a reduction, so Cu2 plus gains two electrons to make Cu solid. 
that occurs in this half cell and so copper ions will gain electrons and form copper metal and they'll start uh, adhering to the surface of this piece of copper, this copper electrode. The zinc undergoes oxidation. Same half reaction as before. Zinc makes zinc 2 plus and two electrons are uh, separated from the zinc. The potential for that is 0.76 volts and as before the potential for the copper was 0.34 volts. The oxidation recur uh, reaction occurs in this cell, so zinc atoms from this electrode lose electrons and form zinc 2 plus ions which go into solution and the zinc electrode over time actually gets smaller. The copper electrode is called the cathode and the definition of a cathode is the place where reduction occurs and it turns out in a spontaneous electrochemical cell the cathode has a positive charge. Electrons are drawn towards the more positive side. Electrons are gained at the cathode. The other electrode, the zinc electrode, is called the anode and the anode is defined as the place where oxidation occurs and the anode is relatively negatively charged by comparison to the cathode. The anode is the place where electrons are produced in a sense uh, by the oxidation of zinc and then what, is, then what ends up happening is the electrons produced when zinc oxidizes flow through this wire to the piece of copper that it's attached to where the electrons are gained by copper 2 plus ions and the reduction reaction takes place. Now the overall reaction for this cell when it runs is the same reaction as we saw uh, previously, copper 2 plus reacts with zinc to make copper and zinc 2 plus and the what's called cell potential is positive 1.1 volts and if we have a voltmeter hooked up here and we have standard conditions, in other words if we have one molar copper 2 plus solution and one molar zinc 2 plus solution we will get a reading on our voltmeter of 1.1 volts. Now note that when electrons flow from the anode to the cathode, what ends up happening is if that, that's all that's taking place is positive ions, copper 2 plus ions, will react with those electrons and make copper solid and there will be less positive ions in this uh, half cell. And on the oxidation side, zinc atoms will lose electrons, form zinc 2 plus ions and more positive charge will be added to this half cell. And if we have a buildup of less positive charge, in other words more negative charge here, and more positive charge here, then electrons won't continue to flow towards the what becomes more negatively charged side unless we connect the two half cells with what's typically called a salt bridge that contains ions that are mobile. And if, uh, if we have a salt bridge, then negative ions can flow into the oxidation half cell and they will then balance the positive ions produced by the oxidation and positive ions will flow into the reduction half cell and they will essentially replace the positive ions that were lost in a sense due to the reduction uh, reaction taking place and when we have all of this when we have two half cells they're connected via an exterior wire and we have a salt bridge to complete the circuit and allow uh, charge balance then we have a an electrochemical cell that can run spontaneously. A spontaneous electrochemical cell we call a galvanic cell or we also call it a voltaic cell and Galvanic or voltaic cells all operate on, on this same basic principle. The reactions that take place might be more complicated. The potentials and potential difference, so the cell potential might be different, but we always have a reduction occurring in one half cell, uh, oxidation in the other, and overall where the electrons gained and lost are equal to each other, and uh, same uh, process for direction of electron flow and direction of ion flow in the salt bridge. Now one other thing to note is uh, we often do what's known as a cell notation which is a shorthand way of describing 
the electrochemical cell or what's going on in it rather than have to draw a picture like we saw uh, previously. And our convention for cell notation is the oxidation reaction, which in this case is zinc makes zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons, is written on the left. And we omit the electrons. We just write the zinc solid and then followed by the zinc 2 plus. And we don't write the electrons because a chemist would be able to look at this and deduce that two electrons are quote unquote lost when this takes place. On the right, we do the reduction half reaction. And again, we write this in a sort of shorthand notation. We write the copper 2 plus first, followed by the copper solid. And we omit the electrons because again, a, a chemist could figure out how many electrons were transferred. And so notice we've written both half reactions, the key components in those half reactions, in the order that the half reactions essentially take place with the oxidation on the left and the reduction on the right. And then if there is a phase difference, so if we have a phase boundary, for example, we have a solid in contact with aqueous, we draw a vertical line for a phase boundary. Same thing over here, copper 2 plus aqueous in contact with copper solid, so that's a phase boundary. And these are now the shorthand representation of the two, what's going on in the two half cells. And then we typically do a double line in the middle, two vertical lines, that represents the salt bridge. And our convention is, uh, once again, oxidation, or what occurs at the anode, we write on the left in the cell notation. And reduction, or what occurs at the cathode, we write on the right in the cell notation. And so this little piece here, zinc solid, line, zinc 2 plus, aqueous, double line, copper 2 plus, aqueous, line, copper solid. That is the cell notation, our shorthand way of writing this. And that is it for the introduction to electrochemical cells.